In the MotoGP Grand Prix of the Americas, Marc Marquez crashed out of the lead and revealed that the reason was a recurring brake issue. When Marquez tucked the front in the hard braking zone into turn 11, he had just passed Pedro Acosta for the lead in the MotoGP race. Marquez has six victories at Coda. Although it appeared as though he had just entered the bend too quickly, Marquez disclosed that the real reason for this was that his front brake had not engaged. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. I'm more disappointed because today the speed was there, the feeling was there, but I had unexpected problems with the front brake during all the race that gave me a lot of difficulties to ride, he stated. The speed wasn't too quick, so even in this situation, I managed to be in the top group. After that, I just tried to lead as quickly as I could to check whether the brake's temperature had changed or anything. The sensation was getting better, but when I got to turn 11, I braked and nothing was there. And then, the second time, braking was better, but still yeah, too much speed, and then it's when I lost the front. According to Marquez, the front brake problem had essentially taken over his race, causing him to push for the lead. He clarified that near the end of the back straight, he was also required to use the brakes two or three times, or every lap. My primary concern was that the feeling would fluctuate at every corner and brake point. Ultimately, my primary concern provided me with the outcome I had anticipated. I then lost my balance. You are aware that when I crash, I apologize and go on, but we had a lot of issues today. In a somewhat ambiguous statement, Marquez stated that this was normal for a new project. Grassini may be new to the team, but he has experience with Ducati motorcycles. The 2023 spec Ducati he is racing this year is a tried and true machine, despite its unreliability at the beginning of the season. Just the day before, over at VR46, Fabio Di Gianantonio's engine caught fire. Today we had a problem. We need to find the answer, Marquez stated. And during all this, I think the team is quite quick and we will have an answer for the future. Although Marquez insisted that he had chosen his tires with a podium finish in mind, he acknowledged that he maybe may have had the pace to win. Like all of his Ducati colleagues, he chose the soft rear. He finished 1-2 in the medium rear alongside Maverick Vanellas of Aprilia and Pedro Acosta of Tech 3 Gas Gas. I was more a little bit thinking for the medium, but then I saw that only two riders out front with the medium and all the Ducatis with the soft, Marquez stated. Since I was faster than them, I answered, put the soft. Because of this, the decision was made with the podium rather than the victory in mind. Pedro Acosta finished second at Coda, behind Maverick Vinales, to record his greatest MotoGP finish. After taking the lead from the starting line, Acosta and Jorge Martin fought for several laps. The youngster and Marc Marquez then got into another brawl, but this one ended abruptly when Marquez crashed out a few turns later. Acosta remarked, you have no idea how much I enjoyed it. From my Moto3 days, I never truly relished it to that extent. Up until Maverick Vinales passed me, the overtakes, sliding, and touches were all really wonderful aspects of the race. Then, he took off like a jet. Anyway, I'm really pleased with the team's performance and the weekend. Acosta was determined to prevent grip problems after experiencing them late in the sprint, so he tried to save as many tires as he could. Although the competition intensified along the process, Acosta claimed that taking the lead in a Grand Prix didn't increase the pressure. Speaking about his fight with Marquez, Acosta thinks he understands why the eight-time world champion lost. Acosta said, Very nice the pass he made. It was enjoyable. There were some damp places in this area the entire weekend, which is why I believe he crashed. He was a little on the left side, but it was still a great battle with Mark and the boys. He is teaching me a lot of things. He has incredible talent. Francesco Bagnaia, the reigning double Moto GP champion, entered the Coda weekend seeking atonement for his mistake that cost him a point and the lead in the Portimao GP last year. However, after experiencing clatter, vibration problems in the Grand Prix and rear grip troubles in the sprint, he only managed to finish in 8th and 5th place when he left Texas. At the first turn, the factory Ducati star found himself wedged between eventual Coda winner Maverick Vinales and title leader Jorge Martin, finishing the first lap in 6th place. After successfully retrying the soft rear tire during warm-up, Bagnaia ran it again despite his problems from Saturday. At first, he appeared to be back to his best as he was instrumental in the early front row clashes. However, by lap 9, the Italian had dropped to 5th, where he stayed. Later on, Bagnaia admitted that his downfall was chatter troubles, which appear to have plagued the majority of GP24 riders on and off this year. 
I used the Sprint Race tire this morning to get more laps out of a used tire and see if a soft could finish the entire race. And I believe it was the right decision, Bagnaya said. I had a great start to my race and felt good. Before the sixth lap, I was thinking that I may challenge for the lead or the podium. However, I began to have severe left side tremor and chattering, making it quite difficult for me to handle everything. Now, 30 points behind Jorge Martin in the World Championship, Banyaya sits in fifth place. After putting up a masterful performance in the sprint at Coda, Maverick Vinales might reconsider his claim that his sprint victory at Portimao was his greatest ride since joining Aprilia. After setting a new lap record in Q2 with the first ever sub two minute one second lap, Vinales dominated every lap from that point on. Vinales had to fight hard to make up ground in the Grand Prix after being forced off course and dropping to 11th place at the first turn. However, the Aprilia rider rallied to finish the race in the top 10. On the 13th lap, Vinales passed Acosta to win the race. Acosta was excellent again, finishing fourth in the sprint after securing his first front row in qualifying. Acosta was amazing in the sprint and qualifying, but he was much more outstanding in the Grand Prix, coming in second and challenging for the race win the majority of the time. Enea Bastianini, who lost a top five position in the sprint due to rear tire issues, began the race falling backwards before gaining ground, much like his teammate Bagnaya. Vinales, who achieved his second consecutive podium finish in a Grand Prix, is the only competitor with superior late race pace. Day one, leader Jorge Martin had two unusual crashes during his opening fast circuits in qualification. But after Qatar and Portimao, the sprint race was more of the same, with the championship leader maintaining his 100% podium record in 2024 with third place. Martin was poised for a podium finish in the Grand Prix, but Bastianini, who was faster, prevailed due to an error on the penultimate lap. Francesco Bagnaia, who started fourth on the grid, set himself up nicely for a strong finish in the sprint, but a poor start was only the beginning of a challenging 10-lap race for the world champion. Fabio Di Gianantonio gained back lost points by finishing in a very strong P6, despite having to retire from the sprint race on lap one due to a mechanical issue. As in the first sprint race of the year in Qatar, Espargro continued to display great speed and finished in fifth place. Vinales outperformed Espargro once more in the Grand Prix, finishing a modest seventh. Marco Bezzecchi had his best weekend of the 2024 season and started to resemble the rider that was so frequently in the front in 2023. Bezzecchi finished the Grand Prix in eighth place. In comparison to his anticipated title opponents, Brad Binder had a terrible weekend after being outshadowed by Pedro Acosta once more. In the sprint, Binder finished 12th and in the Grand Prix, 9th. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.